Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we would ask you to please find your seats. Such a beautiful crowd in here this evening. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I wasn't here with you all on last year, so I certainly missed you, and I'm glad to be back in your company on today. We would ask that you turn your cell phones, your tablets, your watches, you know, all these gadgets that we have. We ask that you turn them to the silent, vibrate, off, do not disturb. We have so many options, right? All right, so get your devices straight, and let's settle in for a great State of the City address on this evening. So now we have all of our devices turned off, right? All right. We'd ask that you stand to your feet as we welcome the Columbia City Council to the stage. We have the Honorable Daniel J. Rickman, the Honorable Howard Duvall, the Honorable Sam Davis, the Honorable Tamika Isaac Devine, the Honorable Edward H. McDowell, and our newly elected member, the Honorable William Brennan. I would ask that you remain standing for the presentation of colors by the City of Columbia Color Guard. The Color Guard will be followed by the National Anthem, but this year it's not going to be by song. We have a saxophonist. So we ask that you remain standing. <laughs> As you are seated, we would like to thank the Columbia Color Guard and Curtis Bates for that beautiful instrumental reden redemption of the national anthem. It was just a sweet reminder of how precious our, our lives and our liberties are. And I would also like for you to give our amazing Columbia City Council a round of applause as they are seated. At this time, please join me in welcoming Rabbi Meyer from the Tree of Life Congregation to deliver this evening's invocation. Good evening. 
God of history, we are grateful for inspired leadership, for men and women who build communities in your image, for stewards dedicated to justice, unafraid to face the challenges of our day, in particular, the challenges of our city of Colombia. God of justice, let our leaders heed the words of the prophet Jeremiah. Make your ways and your acts good. Do not put your trust in lying words. Do justice between a man and his fellow. Do not oppress orphan and widow. May our city and those who lead her radiate with compassion, kindness, and peace, justice, and mercy. God of compassion, remind the leaders of our city that everyone, gay, straight, transgender, black, brown, or white, ch child, single mother, elderly person, homeless or living on the margins, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, or atheist, long-term citizen, recent immigrant, refugee or stranger, is our neighbor, our sibling, woven into the fabric of our community. God of wisdom, grant our elected officials wisdom and understanding so that their efforts on behalf of our city may be significant and successful. God of blessing, bless our leaders with dedication and fortitude and with the imagination to solve the issues we face so that our community may thrive and safety and security be known to all and liberty and equality reign supreme. Amen. I would like for you all to join me in welcoming our fabulous city manager, Teresa Wilson, to the stage. And I believe you all can do better than that for reasons that I don't even have. All right, thank you. <laughs> so last year, Erica was a little under the weather, and I had to do what she does best. So I'm most thankful that she's here again with us this year. Welcome to the 2020 State of the City Address. On behalf of Mayor Benjamin and Columbia City Council, thank you so much for joining us. This is always the time where I'm tasked with being very inclusive and in recognizing all of our special guests. Um, so charge it to my heart, if not to my head, not my heart if we leave anyone out because it is certainly not intentional. Um, I know Mayor Benjamin um, is always very, excited about this time to engage with the community and it's a very special occasion for him and his family um, we're thankful for their presence tonight and all of columbia citizens in person and hopefully also watching at home at this time i will do my best to acknowledge several members of our community who are in attendance members of the clergy if you are a member of the clergy here in our community please stand and be recognized thank you Of course, we always have and are honored to have other elected officials from other entities in our community who are in attendance. If you are an elected official, please stand and be recognized. I see members of Richland County Council and the different various school boards. Thank you so much. West Columbia, Casey, all our neighbors, thank you. We also would like to recognize any appointed administrators or presidents, representatives of higher education institutions or other state agency heads. If any of you are in attendance tonight, please stand. Okay, thank you. And members of the judiciary, including the Honorable um, Judge Benjamin here, as well as our municipal court judges are with us tonight. Please stand and be recognized, our members of the judiciary. Thank you, Magistrate Simons is here as well. Um, at this time, I would like to also personally thank the families of the mayor and council members and ask them to stand if they are here, which I see Mayor Benjamin's family is here, of course. Um, Commissioner Devon and Miss Jeannie McDowell, thank you all 
Um, thank you. Obviously, I work very closely with the mayor and members of council, and so I get to personally see the sacrifices they make, but their families make those sacrifices too for them to publicly serve. And I think it's, um, it's important for us to recognize them because they couldn't do what they do every day without the support at home. Um, our, I'm gonna take this opportunity to also say that this council and this mayor display courageous leadership there's lots of discussion in our communities, even today, about policy matters. These folks make policy matters that impact our community. Sometimes it's bold, but it's also very courageous for them to take those things on, and I wanna thank them personally for doing that. Also speaking of sacrifices, I want to share how I personally witnessed the willingness of our City of Columbia employees to give their all to our community on a daily basis. It humbles me every single day to see the work that they do, the opportunity that I have to work with the most caring, dedicated, and committed group of men and women in local government as far as I'm concerned. So all city employees, please stand and be recognized at this time. Many of our department heads are here. Um, we have a wonderful chief of staff, city attorney, our three assistant city managers who certainly keep me straight every day. And I would say the best public safety team in the country, um, police chief Skip Holbrook, fire chief Aubrey Jenkins, and our emergency management director, Harry Tinsley. Um, the sacrifice of all these individuals and department heads it just cannot be understated, and I thank each one of you for what you do every day. At this time, we will ask our Poet Laureate, Dr. Ed Madden, the City of Columbia Poet Laureate, to also come to the stage, and after that, Erica will come back, and we'll get to the business at hand, and have Mayor Benjamin give his State of the City address. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Um, as I was writing this, I was thinking about the end of a decade um, and how we look back at the record of what's happened and we look forward to the promise of what's to come. Uh, but more than that, I was just thinking about how we measure time and all the ways we measure time um, and the fact that we have two identical clocks on Main Street, two clocks on the same street. There is never only one clock. Even here there are two and both must be wound by hand since time isn't just the turn of sun or season or the binary beat of your watch, but someone's hand long ago turning a key, a crank, so that everybody got to work and trains mostly ran on time. There is never only one clock. Even here there are two and both have four faces as if the tempo of Main Street changes from one block to another, as if those going north toward City Hall see time differently from those headed south to the State House, where stories congeal into marble even when they're not quite true. It depends on where you stand, whether you are in front of the jewelry store or the bank, the art museum or the coffee shop, the hotel or the dorm, the Brazilian steakhouse where the attendant is parking your car or the water department where you're standing in line to pay your bill. The clock of someone waiting at a bus stop is different from the clock of a man driving a car, which is different from the clock running out at the end of a game. The coffee shop is in one time zone and the hospital another, and they are only blocks from each other. There is never only one clock. There's the clock on the wall, the clock on your wrist, and all the clocks embedded in our flesh. There's the clock of the river, which measures its banks, and the clock of pollen, which slows us all down until the rains wash the air. There's the clock of stoplights, the clock of school buses. There's the sun clock and the moon clock, the circulations of feral cats, the visitations of migrating birds, the orb spiders hanging fantasy calendars in autumn air and the strange and beautiful clock of fireflies synchronizing themselves with one another. And it is not always clear how these sync with the clock of council meetings or the replacement of street lights or parking meters or artwork at the airport. 
There are two clocks on the same street. Time is the circle of the sun over the river, seeing the same things again, but in a slightly different light. And time is also the wavy line of the river, beneath the sun, always moving on. January is a clock with two faces, facing opposite ways. One hand waves a flag of corn and cotton, as if here we think we're still there in a past that was small and unfair, where justice might have been the queen of virtues, but someone kept her blindfolded. The other hand unfurls something like a wing, a wave, a page about to be turned at last. And a decade is just another way to say the train depot is not a depot, the post office is no longer a post office, the park was something else, and a bank has slapped its logo over the shoulder of the state house. A decade is a way to draw a dark line through all the little changes. Not a clock, but the shadow of a bridge over the ripples of the river. To say, look at what all has happened between there and here. Thank you. Ed, another round of applause. I want you to turn to, the, to one of your neighbors, the neighbor to your right, and say, that was good. And I want you to turn to the neighbor to your left and say, that was real good. All right, all right, thank you. All right, so I think we're, we're ready. So ladies and gentlemen, let's stand to our feet as we welcome the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin to the stage. Good evening, uh, Columbia. Good evening to our wonderful friends and family. A special welcome to all of you who took time out of your schedules to join us this evening, whether in person or online, uh, for tonight's remarks. I promise that uh, I won't keep you too long, okay? So um, fingers crossed. Um, to my fellow members of Com Columbia City Council, including our new uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Ed McDowell, uh, I will tell uh, each of you uh, without hesitation that I have the pleasure of serving with the very best city council uh, in this country. Uh, so um, <laughs> we, we have the um, opportunity to uh, agree at times, to disagree at times, to do so respectfully and, and come out with solutions that work for the people of Columbia. And I'm so proud to call each and every one of you colleagues. So thank you uh, so much. Uh, our wonderful city manager, uh, Teresa Wilson, uh, the incredible staff of, of the City of Columbia, uh, all of our uh, elected officials. I see so many of you. I want to thank Teresa for recognizing everyone. It saves us about a half hour uh, from my speech. Uh, the, um, uh, my amazing mother and father, Sam and Maggie Benjamin. I see my Aunt Janetta is, is, is with us, my sister-in-law, uh, Cynthia, uh, my two adopted parents. Uh, Donald and, and Adrian uh, Gist, uh, my sun, my moon, my stars, uh, DeAndre and, and my beautiful daughter, uh, Bethany. We had a debate as to whether or not she could wear her Vans uh, tonight. And uh, as usual, she won the debate. Uh, so um, I'm sure I'll hear about it from my wife later. Uh, our other awesome uh, little lady, uh, Jordan Grace, uh, ditched me tonight for a school trip. Uh, how could a bus trip with a bunch of 12-year-olds to Disney World uh, compete with her 50-year-old dad uh, giving a speech in downtown Columbia? Who knew, you know, but uh, I lost that one. Uh, so um, she's not with us uh, this evening. Uh, tonight's extra special because this is actually uh, my 10th State of the City, y'all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
I'll try not to go too long or get too sappy uh, this evening. Um, I was a, a baby when this uh, first uh, started. Uh, it has been uh, an incredible uh, journey. Um, while I'm uh, uh, not the same young man that I once was, I did try to compete with Ed and Sam and wear my uh, double-breasted suit uh, uh, today. Uh, the, um, I was a baby when this first started. That was a little delayed reaction, but it's up there now. Uh, and to go ahead and ruin the surprise uh, for you, I will tell you that the state of our city is strong. Uh, we are strong. Um, <laughs> Ten years ago in April, I was uh, elected mayor of this city um, following 20 years of incredible leadership by uh, Bob Coble. Uh, we're thankful uh, to him. I am uh, to him for still uh, providing me amazing advice and counsel as I try to do the job on behalf of the people of the city. Uh, serving uh, each and every one of you has truly been one of the greatest blessings of my life. I remember assuming this job just as I assumed my very first job uh, many years ago. I'm not even sure my daddy remembers this. I remember vividly waking up uh, before the crack of dawn, just shy of my 12th birthday, uh, to go to work um, with my father. He told me what to wear. We were going to a job site somewhere in, in, in Mineola uh, or thereabouts. Uh, he told me what to wear. Uh, I, I put on my, my Converse. Uh, these weren't Chuck Taylors. Uh, these were actually leather Converse. I remember them vividly because the, the, the stitching in them was all brown. Uh, it was brown because uh, uh, trying to impress my friends at school one day, I put Vaseline on my sneakers, uh, trying to make them nice and shiny. And then, of course, walked through a dirt lot and destroyed them. Um, <laughs> I uh, ruined my kicks, but it taught me uh, a wonderful lesson. Uh, my daddy gave me an old black handle, a putty knife, a, a paint scraper, and some, a roll of masking tape. Uh, he was a, a painter, a contractor. Uh, I knew uh, then, and I saw, of course, he'd go back and fix everything I messed up uh, not long after we were done. But that wasn't the point. Uh, my father was teaching me the value of, of hard work, uh, of earning the things that you want, in life, uh, that there's no shame in, in honest work. Uh, I remember my mother, after I engaged in a heated argument uh, with an adult over a minor issue on Sutter Avenue in front of our house, uh, I maintain to this day that my position was right, uh, that I was right. She's shaking her head right now because she remembers it as well. Uh, but my mother explained to me in no uncertain terms that I would always respect my elders. I would always respect my elders. Uh, that God gave me two ears and one mouth so that I could listen twice as much as I talked. That words matter, that kind words heal. My parents were parents and they were mentors to me. And I'll come back to that in a moment. This evening, we're, we're happy back in this Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center, the soon to be expanded uh, Convention Center as I look Chairman Devine and Chairman Livingston and the rest of the County Council and School District right in the eyes. Uh, thank them, them for their incredible partnership. Uh, Councilwoman, I see you right there too. Thanking you so much for your incredible partnership uh, in collaboration with Richland County and Richland School District 1 with USC and other partners. We're going to creep into a greater measure of our potential with a bigger and better facility here, a facility that's going to be able to host the growing number of events that want to come to our region. Expansion is a difficult uh, endeavor. It, it, it not only involves resources and strategy, but also vision. Uh, Proverbs tells us that where there's no vision, people perish. You have to have a vision about where you want to be and what you want to become. Expansion takes time. And if it's intentionally coupled with, uh, uh, with time, it helps create an equation that yields great results. Um, as we have planned over the last several years, we've become the most talented, educated, and entrepreneurial city in America. Our city has changed. Uh, many of you saw uh, at the end of last year as we were preparing for 2020, everyone was hashtagging the uh, decade challenge on social media. And as we uh, brought 2019 to a close, it, it just prompted us to also think about ways we could post photos from 2019 uh, to now. Uh, I did not have gray hair in 2019, uh, in 2010, I might add. 
for most of us, the, the glow up, as opposed to the grow up, uh, was phenomenal. So here we decided to do a decade challenge of our, of our own, just to kind of remind us of the, of the progress that we made. Let's cue the slideshow uh, team. Uh, how we've uh, continued uh, this incredible progress, uh, the improvements, uh, the, the, the innovation uh, across uh, this city. Uh, but perhaps even more exciting than the aesthetic improvements that we see across our great city is the meaningful and intentional work that went into making those changes happen together. Together we've laid a foundation to move this city forward. If you would look at the picture of yourself from 10 years ago, uh, you wouldn't just note your hairstyle, your clothing. Um, you remember how you were feeling at that time. You remember your joys and successes, the pains and failures. Uh, Will, I thought you'd like that photo. Uh, that's a Will Brennan project right there. Um, you, you remember your pain and, 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 your, and your failures. You remember the, what you were part of, what changes uh, you were working on so that you could one day get to the photo taken today in 10 years. Um, as much as we highlight the visible changes in our lives, we also have to recognize the often overlooked changes that aren't visible to the naked eye, the changes we've made internally. Uh, the, um, we've incurred, Madam City Manager, uh, Jeff, Missy, and others, budget surpluses in eight of our last uh, 10 years. We've cut property taxes uh, in the city of Columbia um, by over 12 mills over the last uh, decade. Our city tax millage is down from 106.1 mills to 94.1 mills. We've investing, we're investing nearly three quarters of a billion dollars in water, sewer, and stormwater infra infrastructure, watching our sanitary sewer overflows drop precipitously each year. We received each year since 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18 the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. We fully restored the city's reserve fund, which was hit hard during the financial crisis. Perhaps over the last 10 years, you've become more patient than you used to be. Maybe you're more altruistic than you were uh, previously. Maybe some of us are trying, uh, uh, had some trying challenges that produced in us a tenacity and an endurance uh, to face our fears head on, to make things happen, no matter how difficult they might be. Uh, those are the types of internal changes that we also make uh, as a city. Uh, since 2010, we've been thoughtful uh, in our approach and, uh, and uh, our, we've applied pressure in the right areas, molding us into the city that we've now become. As our nation's very first planned capital city, we have a legacy of intentionality that exists here. Uh, that was evident in our first uh, city flag in the last 100 years and we'll take it on next week. Uh, as our poet laureate, laureate mentioned, uh, as a city council uh, manifesting a new flag uh, that will show our vision, our values, our belief in inclusion for the next 100 years. Uh, we've accomplished in 10 years uh, so much more than I'll be able to comprehensively uh, note tonight. But I do want to highlight some of the accomplishments that we've made together since 2010. Uh, we have made the largest investment in public safety in the history of our city, increasing our police department budget uh, by almost 80%, purchasing shot spider technology uh, with great leadership and thanks to Chief Holbrook and Deputy Chief Kelly and the men and women of the Columbia Police Department. We've improved morale, reputation, efficiency, <laughs> and the effectiveness of our police department. We've invested, been a national leader in 21st century policing, uh, establishing a Justice for All initiative uh, for greater community engagement, diversity, training, and accountability uh, for law enforcement. Together, we endured a 1,000 year event, Chief Tinsley. Uh, the incredible team uh, that we have here, our entire city staff and emergency services staff successfully collaborated with agencies from across this region, across the state, and across uh, the country. Our amazing Columbia Richland Fire Department, uh, led by Chief Aubrey Jenkins, doing amazing things, including keeping a steady supply of water to our area hospitals uh, so that it, the infirm uh, would be free from danger. Chief Jenkins, who in the last 10 years also became the very first African-American chief of our fire department. Um, and he continues to lead that department with distinction. Uh, we have revitalized Main Street, seeing nearly $2 billion in economic investment in downtown uh, Columbia. 
uh, public-private partnerships led by the city and the business community. Thankful to the City Center Partnership, to the Columbia, Columbia Museum, of, Museum of Art, uh, to One Columbia, Soda City, and so many others. The heart of our city is thriving. Uh, we facilitated an amendment to our zoning code to permit student housing in the Central Business District, uh, which permitted the conversion of the former SCANA headquarters, 452,000 square feet of emptiness uh, and a drain on Main Street to the hub, which added nearly 1,000 new citizens uh, to Main Street to help with its vitality. We established the Columbia Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. The city achieved its very first listing as a bicycle-friendly community by the League of American Bicyclists. At Bull Street, we started the 20-year transformation of the largest tract of undevelopable land, undeveloped land uh, east of the Mississippi uh, into a new district in our downtown, two and a half times the size of the central business district. Constant development and preservation underway as we speak. We brought professional baseball back to Columbia uh, with the Fireflies in Segra Park, Baseball Digest Stadium of the Decade, of the Decade. <laughs> we received LEED Gold certification for the new water distribution and wastewater management facility, the very first City of Columbia building to achieve this status. The City of Columbia made history by issuing its first ever green bonds to improve the city's stormwater system, creating a lasting investment in, su in sustainability. This nearly $38 million green bond was the very first in the country to be certified green as a standalone stormwater bond by the Climate Bond Initiative, an, in an independent global nonprofit that rates environmentally responsible investments. As a city, we not, we not only prioritize sustainability efforts uh, in the environment itself, but also we planted 10,000 trees. We gave away 1,000 rain barrels. Uh, got, got. In North Columbia, we continue to extend the streetscaping. Uh, thanks to the city, thank you to Richland County, thank you uh, to Congressman Clyburn. Uh, Mr. Davis, we completed the Busby Street Community Resource and Training Complex. Mr. Davis and Mr. Uh, McDowell always debate as to whose district that's actually in. I haven't tried to figure it out lately. Uh, but we've invested in Greenview Park, in Earlwood Park, Roy Lynch Park, uh, the Bethel Bishop Baseball Field, Hampton Park, Mr. Rickerman, uh, and so many others. With, inve with this investment, we're watching businesses and neighborhoods thrive. We established one Columbia for Arts and Culture. We instituted the first ever Poet Laureate. And another round of applause for Dr. Ed Madden. <laughs> who amazingly captures the spirit of the city every single time he gets up here. And we established Stormwater Studios with the Columbia Development Corporation. We hired the very first African-American female to serve as city manager of the city of Columbia, Teresa Wilson, <laughs> who continues to serve with distinction, and we're so thankful for her. Columbia was the first city in South Carolina uh, to power all of our city council meetings on renewable energy. Uh, Mr. Duval, we eclipsed one million visitors to the region uh, in August 21st, 2017. For the last two years, we've had either, we've either been number two or the number four city in the country uh, where millennials are moving to, according to Smart Asset. Uh, when we came here 10 years ago, we were worried about losing our talent. Now we're retaining our talent and pulling people from other parts of the country. We've completed and are preparing for the adoption of our city's comprehensive plan, our fantastic planning staff uh, working on Columbia Compass and Vision 2036. This directional and aspirational plan was empowered by engaging our citizens and members of our community in, in exciting and innovative ways. We also rewrote and adopted a new unified development ordinance, uh, which for the first time, which for the first time will overhaul our zoning and land development or code, uh, which is, uh, hadn't been done in over 40 years. Uh, this new code uh, streamlines and makes it much more understandable uh, being much more business friendly, working with our business leaders, our chamber, our Midlands business, Midlands business Leadership Group, and others to help us achieve the vision of creating a much more walkable, mixed use community. Uh, the City of Columbia was awarded a uh, three star community rating. Robert Anderson, I want to say thank you uh, for your leadership. You and Mary Pat uh, did amazing work 
uh, three-star community rating by star communities, a, 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 a feather in our cap on sustainability that evaluates the living and sustainability of U.S. Uh, communities. Columbia is the very first city in South Carolina to re receive this, cer this certification. <laughs> and while the past uh, decade was quite exciting, last year specifically Columbia had one of our proudest years to date. We passed several, several exciting new city ordinances. Uh, one as one of the only states in the country, regrettably without a hate crimes law, uh, we passed a hate crimes ordinance. That it puts additional punishment on those who commit a crime based on race, color, creed, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, or national origin. We saw the need for such laws on display so vividly yesterday as uh, we uh, commemorated with our Jewish leaders and friends the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz death camp. Uh, hate has no place in our city and we proudly proclaim it through law. This week's tragedy with uh, basketball superstar Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, the Altabellis, the Chesters, uh, Ms. Mauser, and Mr. Zobayan, uh, that pain of loss was felt across communities everywhere. Uh, and ours is not unique. And though that was an accident, the pain and the loss of death is real. Uh, regrettably, we've, we've all felt it. We work closely with our men and women in uniform, uh, 21st century policing, working with families across our city, uh, organizations like Serve and Connect, our Columbia Urban League, our fantastic neighborhoods like Booker Washington Heights and others. I will tell you that too many families across this community feel that same pain of loss every day, losing loved ones. And I will tell you this is why we will not stop, Mr. Attorney General, from working to take illegal guns off the streets of Columbia, South Carolina. We will take guns off of our streets, out of our neighborhoods, out of our schools, so our children can learn and grow from their peers free from fear, free from harm. The reality is that as we debate politics, some of our children are debating survival. And we will do everything that we possibly can to make sure they enjoy the same safety and security that our families enjoy. Our Office of Community Development, hard at work, assisted 23 people in purchasing new homes through unique home loans here in the city of Columbia this past year the best home loans that any city can offer. They've provided financial assistance to 136 people facing homelessness. The Change Up program assisted 161 clients with paying their ward and utility bills, totaling nearly $50,000 in assistance. Ms. Devine, we opened up, we opened up match and match funding for children's savings accounts for 13 kindergartners at Watkins Nance Elementary School, expanded the program to Carver Lion Elementary School and the children weren't the only ones receiving financial literacy assistance. We implemented our employee financial wellness program uh, for our City of Columbia employees that allows our cities on work time to take financial wellness courses that help them with budgeting, home buying, savings, and more, all during their work hours. Our smart city efforts continue to prosper as our AMI installations hit a milestone with Columbia Water pass, surpassing 15,000 installations, Clint, in December, along with new automated water meters who have stepped into the 21st century. The city and the University of South Carolina be began collaborating on development of a new program, on development of a new program uh, that will notify public safety officials of, and train, of train arrivals that block roadways. I know people like to hear that. Uh, I literally get a tweet every single day about uh, a train block on the roadway. But this program was going to allow public safety agencies to properly plan for these impediments and dispatch responders accordingly to ensure that the, the time isn't lost when responding to emergencies. We are the first city in the country to test this type of program, and we're proud to be working alongside our flagship university on this effort. Once developed, 
uh, further discussion to take it around to other places uh, will be, um, uh, will be uh, active. Uh, in addition, the city continues to strongly push our railroad companies to avoid blocking crossings for long periods of time and will continue to do so. Our State of Columbia Youth Commission uh, was reestablished this year, hosting a citywide uh, peer election uh, which they selected their own leaders. Uh, it's no surprise to many of you that the future is female. All but one of our new commissioners are women, uh, young women. Uh, nine commissioners elected, uh, and they have decided to focus this year on sustainability, public safety, education, and economic and community development. Youth leadership matters. We have to pour into these young people and learn from them as well. <laughs> We worked aggressively this past year to put together a comprehensive plan for the city to achieve our goal, to be ready for 100, to be uh, supported by 100% renewable energy by 2036. Our Food Policy Committee conducted several community meetings uh, and presented important findings and recommendations to City Council just this last month. Exciting times ahead in addressing food deserts and food insecurity here in the Midlands. Columbia was awarded a $30,000 grant by the AARP as part of the Cities of Service Experience Matters competition. Uh, Cities of Service is going to work with Columbia with us to develop volunteering initiatives that address public uh, problems as it relates to drivers of poverty, particularly uh, focusing on engaging our residents 50 and older in program implementation. We focus a lot on, on millennials. We need to focus a lot more on perennials, those of us who are 50 and over who give back every single year to the fabric of this great community. I'm proud to be in partnership with the AARP in that effort. Uh, we kept a promise uh, from last year to create a commission on compassion and inclusion. This group of faith-based and community leaders has conducted interactive sessions around race relations. There's still so much work to be done. And soon we're going to be trained to foster diversity, inclusion, and compassion in each and every one of our individual communities. Our Citizens Advisory Committee on Quiet Zones completed the required di diagnostic studies for all crossings in Columbia, providing a recommendation for a phased approach to implementing quiet zones throughout the city. The cost of the full plan is estimated to be $14 million. Uh, we're currently pursuing the first quiet zone uh, com comprised of 14 crossings from Gadsden Street to Beltline along the Norfolk Southern owned rail line. Um, perhaps one of our most excited and ap appreciated projects this was made possible through strong partnerships with the state of, so state of South Carolina, USC, and South Carolina DOT. I do want to give a personal thanks to State Senator Dick Harputlian and the University of South Carolina for their, their leadership and assistance in this effort. So while we had many accomplishments and progress this past year, um, collectively, we face many challenges in 2019. 2019 is in some ways fueled an aspiration for better days to come in 2020. As we all know, this year will be incredibly important, uh, not just for our city, but for our entire country. With the presidential election uh, coming, uh, there are other issues that are also of great importance, but not yet discussed as much, including this year's census. Uh, the um, one person loves the census over here. I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> Uh, the City of Columbia and our Complete Count Committee are working to ensure there's a complete and accurate count for our city when the census kicks off in April. Many people don't realize the census impacts every aspect of what we do here in our city. Community organizations use census information to develop social service programs, community action projects, senior lunch programs, and child care centers. Businesses use the numbers to decide where to locate factories, uh, headquarters, shopping centers, movies, theaters, banks, and other activity, other offices, um, activities that also often lead to new jobs. Even 911 emergency systems are based on maps developed from the last census. And when disaster hits, the census tells us, tells rescuers how many people will need their help. This will also be the first year that we'll be able to fill our census online. Um, so we need, or, or by phone, or also by mail. So we want our city to have the resources and data necessary to both fulfill the needs of our community and advance us uh, so we can all play a role in ensuring that the census is performed accurately. 
uh, it's another year in which we're going to use innovative, innovative tools to try and get our everyday tasks done. Uh, we're going to change, we're going to drastically change that this year as well by bringing more awareness to uh, free tax preparation in our city. The United Way of the Midlands, the Cooperative Ministry, uh, SC Thrive, been working on the front lines to put money back into citizens' pockets using the Earned Income Tax Credit. And this year, working with them as mayor, I'm committed to helping amplify the great work that they're doing um, by working to put another $1 million in the pockets of our citizens using the Earned Income Tax Credit uh, in, across this community. Um, <laughs> announcing, indeed, on this uh, Saturday, uh, 2020 Vita, Ta Vita Tax Preparation is going to kick off uh, with our annual uh, Super Saturday free tax prep event at the Cooperative Ministry on Beltline starting at 9 a.m. In our continued commitment to sustainability, we're also thrilled that Columbia Water is going to install uh, a solar farm, a solar farm intended to provide two megawatts of power here uh, to the metro region, uh, built adjacent to our facility on I-77 and Bluff Road. Uh, it's an exciting opportunity that we've been looking forward to and thankful for the work and leadership uh, of Columbia Water, Clint. We're going to continue moving in the direction of renewable energy, working with FEMA as well, uh, working with and oftentimes pushing the federal government to do what it should do to restore the canal to full operation. Once completed and back in, proc back in, 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 uh, in action, the Columbia Hydroelectric Generation Station will, will produce five megawatts of power per day. This is something that has to be a priority. We're going to continue working and pushing to make sure that happens. Uh, that power will literally and metaphorically power uh, actions and, and events and projects all across our city as we work to develop the census tracts known as our opportunity zones, intentionally committing to make sure that development projects consistent with our original vision of opportunity zone projects becomes real, that the upgrades will not just be to land, but also for the people who live in those census tracts. We have to make sure that we focus on equity in, in our development decisions. The, um, we're going to continue in our development efforts as we revitalize and invest also in Finley Park, a plot with so much land and, 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 and character. Uh, this plan developed in-house by our incredible parks staff uh, will change Columbia for a generation. It will be a unique partnership uh, that will be beyond the 18 or $20 million that we invest uh, in it. It will change our city, and we are committed to making that happen in 2020. Last year alone, we saw more than $118 million in economic development projects in our city. Uh, we also announced in partnership with our friends at, at Richland County a wonderful new incentive designed to attract capital investment to the Midlands. So far, nearly $200 million in development uh, has been announced through this incentive. And we expect that number to climb in the near future as we continue to work together to move this region forward. Overall, as a city, we are proud to have more than $950 million in economic development projects uh, either announced or currently under development here in our city. This is Columbia's decade. We're going to keep moving forward and moving forward strong. And details are being finalized to work with transitions to begin to also employ our unsheltered citizens, our homeless citizens, uh, to complete uh, beautification projects across the city. It's being finalized, and we're excited to see that underway. I'll also tell you that uh, that move with the mayor is back. Uh, we're going to be relaunching this initiative. The scale is coming back, Daniel. All right, so. Uh, we're going to be focusing on men's health by hosting a men he men's health week during the month of June, which is, men he which is men's health month, focusing on ensuring that health and, and wellness and a ho holistic approach uh, is a priority to the men of our city. Um, knowing where we were in 2010 and where we are now in 2020 grants us a proper perspective to prepare for the next decade and the decades to come. 
as we look ahead, it gives us an opportunity to think about the intentionality required to achieve progress. How do we want to adjust from here? Where is space to improve? So the goals we've outlined in our 2036 vision statement are attainable. What resources uh, in both human and financial capital are necessary to make sure that changes happen and keep our timelines properly paced? None of us hold, knows what tomorrow holds, but the humbling truth is uh, that keeps us both expectant and reliant on one another. As we look to tomorrow, 2020, 2036 and beyond, let's not forget to do a few things. We can build infrastructure and build buildings, but this year I hope that we also focus on building people. And that's why I come back to my parents as mentors and our role as mentors and leaders. As I stated earlier, I didn't just have Sam and Maggie as wonderful parents, I had two mentors and many of you did too. A lot of our children don't have enough mentors in their lives. Uh, many of them who do have good mentors, the mentors are busy working two and three jobs just to make sure they keep food on the table, the lights on, and roofs over their heads. It's incumbent upon us to make sure we step up and stand in the gap for the children of our community. So this year we'll host a 2020 Mentoring Summit the goal is, is to aim at recruiting 500 new mentors for children who need them most across our community. Uh, we need your help to change the life of a child. I am personally reaching out personally directly to African American men. We need more black men on the front lines to help our boys get to where we know that they can get to. They have incredible gifts and we've got to make sure we help them get there. I know the power of having strong men in my life. Uh, I have a father, now a father-in-law. I grew up with Mr. Strickland and Mr. Souffrant, Mr. Clark, Mr. Brown, Mr. Red, Mr. Mortise, Mr. Hunter, and the list goes on and on, on and on of strong men uh, who are committed to making sure, who are committed to making sure that I was successful. I've already grabbed about two dozen good men who agreed to join me on this journey, and I hope that many of you will as well. We want to go into this summer, into this summer of 2020, with no child ever feeling the despair of believing that he or she is in this world alone. As Dr. King said, I believe that we can all lead because we can all serve. Let's serve a child in 2020. I say that saying that our role as leaders is not vested in our titles. Uh, today, I'm your mayor, and tomorrow I may not be. It's important that we know that our titles represent our temporary standing in God's world. And that I'm a child of God, I'm a husband and a father, I'm a son and a brother, and then I'm the mayor in that order. It's so important that as leaders that we recognize our responsibility to, be, to each one reach one, each one teach one. We remember that leaders don't say go, that leaders say let's go because we learn by fouling, that leaders give their service, not their soul, their service, and you retain your soul. That leaders build non-traditional relationships. You realize that two people equally yoked can see the same issue very differently. We respect a diversity of views, and we work together to solve problems. That leaders keep their faith out front. You manifest it in the way that you feel right, but there's always room for love and grace and mercy, which seems seemingly at short supply in today's world. Leaders are not embarrassed to pray and never ashamed to ask someone to pray for you. I promise you there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. Leaders remember to hug our family members a little bit tighter and pray for their safekeeping. Leaders remember to be kind and thoughtful to those around us. Leaders remember to use our time wisely, knowing it's how we choose to live in each moment that changes the traje trajectory of our lives and those that we see to influence. Leaders hold each other accountable, recognizing it's tough to stay the course at times, but the reward is always worth it. And finally, uh, I want you all to remain ever hopeful about the future of this city that we are building together because sometimes the world can seem downright scary and sad, but I believe 
in Colombia. I believe in the future of this city. This is Colombia's decade. Let's lead it together. May God bless you, and may God keep you, and may God bless the city of Colombia. Thank you. Mayor Benjamin, I felt like I didn't give him a proper introduction, but he's a man who needs no introduction. We have a lot of kids who tour City Hall, and even the children, when we ask them, who's the mayor of this great city, they say Steve Benjamin. And so he requires no lengthy introduction. As you can see, he's a strategic visionary, a man with a laser-like focus, and we are grateful for your leadership, Mayor Benjamin. So at this time, please join me in welcoming Pastor George Wright. He's the senior pastor of Shandon Baptist Church, and he will offer our benediction. Why don't you stand with me for our closing prayer and word of benediction? And I do want to say, Mr. Mayor, that I did not realize that your city address could very quickly become a church service. This was powerful tonight. <laughs> You're taking the role of a pastor. That was great. Thank you. I also wanted to tell you, my second grade son, my youngest son here in Richland One, when he found out I was coming tonight to be with the mayor, he said, oh, I know the mayor. He came to my class. Tell him I said hello. <laughs> so thank you for that. Let's pray together. Father God, it is a privilege to have a night like this where we have been reminded of the many reasons that we have to be grateful in this city that we love. We thank you for the accomplishments that have been achieved. We thank you for the work that has been done. We thank you for the beautiful change that has taken place to better our city and to improve the quality of life. Father, we would be remiss to not thank you for what we hear in these accomplishments and achievements. We remember from your word that every good and perfect gift comes down from above. And so we thank you for your provision. And we thank you for the leadership that you have put in place to guide our city, to provide vision, to provide direction. We pray, Lord God, for your protection over our leaders. We pray for wisdom in the decisions that need to be made. We thank you for these who are among us tonight, who represent our first responders, our rescue workers, our police, our firefighters. Lord, we are grateful for men and women who put their lives on the line for the safety and quality of life in this city to flourish. We pray your hand of blessing and protection would be on them. Father, we have so much to be grateful for, and yet we recognize that there is so much need around us. We recognize that in the midst of this city we love, there is tremendous, tremendous brokenness. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give us eyes to see the needs around us and hearts of compassion to get involved where the need is great. Father, we pray that you would give us the courage to reach across the aisle, to work together for the sake of the common good. Father, we pray that you would give us the courage to step out, to reach a hand to those who are in need. We pray that you would give us the courage to treat others the way we long to be treated. And Father, when we disagree, we pray that you would give us the courage to lead with love, to demonstrate grace, to speak the truth, to be quick to forgive, and to be a picture of the very grace and mercy that you have offered to us. Father, we thank you for this night, and we do ask for your provision and your protection and your wisdom in the days ahead. We believe that you are with us in this city, we are thankful for what you have done, and we ask your hand of blessing to continue to, to guide us as we go on our way. May we be people who lift others up. May we be people who point to that which is good. Guide our lives in your wisdom, gracious Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>